Hey there everyone, welcome to another episode of HET. So today we'll be tackling what's hopefully the final oil leak repair that we need to do before we start heading into the winter season and things get pretty miserable to work on in the garage. And that is the uh, front axle seals and o-rings. So these are the parts that we're going to be replacing. We got the o-rings right here and then the axle seals themselves. Uh, I'll have these linked in the video description to where you can get these. There's not too many steps involved in this repair, uh, but some of them can you have to be kind of careful with. So I'll go ahead and walk you guys through it. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pick or some sort of prying tool, take off this cap that covers the axle nut. Should just pop off. Uh, you might have a little difficulty squeezing it into the crack, um, but just be patient. Uh, try to get it in as deep as possible and try not to gouge it. Uh, too much. Uh, then there's going to be a little divot right here where the uh, axle nut um, is kind of like punched in to the uh, end of the CD axle. So you're going to want to undo that little punch. That looks good. And then we're ready to uh, loosen this guy up a little bit. All right, now to loosen the uh, CV axle, you're going to need a 32 millimeter socket, which again, I'll have links uh, to down in the description. And then you're gonna wanna either take a breaker bar or an impact. Um, this may be on there uh, pretty darn tight, especially if it's as rusted as this is. And then give it a good push. And then that should loosen it up. And you just want it to the point where it's loose. You don't want to take it all the way off. All right, so then what you're going to do is you're going to get it safely supported on jack stands, take the lug nuts off, at which point you'll be able to remove the wheel and spin off that axle nut the rest of the way. Okay, now in order to get the clearance we need to remove the CV axle, we're going to need to separate uh, this lower ball joint here. To that we need to loosen up this pinch bolt. So we're going to take our 14 millimeter socket, breaker bar, loosen him up a little bit, and finish it off with a ratchet. All right, then we'll just kind of come in here with a pry bar, attempt to break this guy free. Here he comes. All right, now we should be able to more or less just kind of wiggle off uh, CV axle here. All right, now we'll go ahead and take the rest of the CV axle out of the differential housing. So we'll get a pry bar in there and start just wig wedging them out. There we go. All right. And then some oil might drip out. So be prepared for that. Get some newspaper underneath. Uh, and then you're just going to want to give it a light tug to pull it out. Oh. Be careful. 
All right, now we'll go ahead and start taking out the uh, seal carriers. Okay, now important thing to note before we go on uh, taking out these seal carriers is that we do need to keep track of how many turns it takes to spin these guys out. Uh, the seals in there are preloaded, and that preload is controlled uh, by the amount of turns it takes, or uh, essentially the position of the seal carrier within the differential housing. So we're just going to take a paint marker and kind of draw in some marks so that we know exactly where this thing is going at the end. All right, and then we'll go ahead and start spinning this guy out. So in order to spin this out, we have this 14 millimeter uh, retaining bolt right here. Shouldn't be torqued on too tight. Beautiful. All right, and then we're just going to take uh, either screwdriver or pry bar, and then we're gonna tap on these ridges here and that's what we're going to use to spin this guy out. Take your time, it's going to be a little harder at first, and as it loosens up it'll get easier. Okay, so I'm at four turns now, so this thing's pretty easy to spin by hand. We can see and I can see that there's some more leakage, so I got my drain pan underneath here. And I'm gonna get ready with another color paint marker to mark where this comes out. So that's five. I'm gonna call that out. And that's why we got our drain pan underneath. All right, so now we'll go ahead and uh, get these on the bench and uh, replace the seals. All right, so we got the bearing holder assembly here on the bench. Just to get these old seals out, we're gonna flip them over and put on our seal driver. And then just give these guys some good wax uh, in my experience, these guys are usually in there pretty darn good, so you may have to be, uh, just take your time, be patient. And there she comes. And we'll remove this old O-ring. Beautiful. All right, so we'll get this guy cleaned up and then uh, we'll start reinstalling the new seals. All right, so you're gonna wanna make sure that the bearing holder is as clean as possible before you start putting the new uh, seals in. Now, to start off, you'll have this large O-ring. Part number is right there. Loop that around. Might be a good idea to put some uh, Vaseline or installation lubrication on it when you're putting it in. You just want to make sure that that groove is nice and clean and the O-ring is well seated. Uh, then you're going to turn the uh, seal holder this way and start putting in your new seal. Now, there are two different part numbers for the driver's side and the passenger side, so make sure you're using the correct one. This is the part number for the passenger side. And you're just going to take some assembly lube or Vaseline and just kind of smear that around the leading edge like so. Just to make Go in a little nicer. There we go. All right. 
And we're going to gently put that in. It's important that you want to try to start this as, you know, roughly as flat as possible because if you get crooked, it's really hard to straighten out. All right, so we'll get our seal installer here. And we'll just start lightly, lightly tapping this guy in. Every so often, just kind of check. So we can see right here, we got one side that's cocked. So we want to try to bang on this side a little bit more. And then just kind of keep, keep working each side until it's roughly straight. So that's looking a little better. And eventually you're gonna want it flush uh, with this surface here. All right, so after tapping around this guy for a while, this is probably about as flush as we are going to get this guy. Uh, so after that, you wanna do another double check, make sure all of your surfaces are clean, and then we'll get ready to install this guy back into the differential housing. All right, so now I got my paint marks lined up, put it in exactly the same place I took it out. I've got it in for one revolution right now just to hold it in there and then I'll just kind of go ahead and keep spinning it roughly until uh, it gets too hard to turn by hand. So that's two revolutions there. That's three. Now it's getting a little bit harder. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of do the reverse of what I was doing before. Where I got my pry bar here. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep tapping it to spin it around. And you're just going to keep on doing this until it's back to the point you started. All right, now that we have our paint marks lined up, we're going to reinstall our locking tab. So get him in, into position, make sure he doesn't wiggle around on you. And then just go ahead and tighten it down. All right, that should be good right there. All right, now that we have our seal holder reinstalled, we can reinstall our CV axle. So to do that, you're gonna to try to get this as straight as possible. And then give it a good push, try to get it past the snap ring. Beautiful, just like that. All right, so now to put the other end of the CV axle back in, we need to Put the ball joint back into place. So we're going to take a pry bar, route it through the uh, control arm, and use the subframe as a fulcrum point. And then try to move the steering knuckle back into place. and reinstall the CV axle. There we go. All right, now we will reinstall our pinch bolt. 
and torque him down to 37 foot-pounds. Perfect. All right, if you have not yet done so, now would be a good time to replace the gear oil and the differential. Otherwise, we will go ahead and proceed to getting the axle nut snug down to hand tight and then proceed to reinstall the wheels. All right, now we'll go ahead and lower the car. And we'll tighten the axle nut to 140 foot-pounds. Okay, with that, all that's left to do is to put on the axle nut cover and torque the lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds. All right, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Let me know in the comments below if this video helped you guys at all out, or if you have any tips of your own that might help someone else. With that, have fun with your guys' projects. I'll see you guys in the next video.